MotoGP riders go so fast that when they come off their bikes, they need the best protection. Marc Marquez wears an Alpine Stars race suit, so we headed to their factory in Italy to see how to make a championship winning race suit. So Jeremy, you are showing us around the factory today and we've come to the development laboratory at Alpine Stars to find out what happens with the testing of all the products before they go out to all the riders and drivers. Yes indeed, yes, and we're at the moment at the impact test machine where we've got a back protector that would typically be used by a racer under their leather suit. Um, we have to subject this particular protector to a number of different tests, both in the development of the product and then to make sure it conforms to CE certification, which is basically a normative uh, standard which is designed to make sure that protective equipment is exactly that, that it reaches a certain level. So how do we test it? It's in this lovely machine. What happens? Um, we, we drop a five kilogram weight from uh, about a meter and uh, we do um, a series of drops over the surface of the protector to measure the output that we get through a load cell underneath. So we're really looking to re um, measure the referred energy that comes through from each impact. Should we have a go? Test it out. Absolutely. Let's see how strong this is. That is quite a force. I wouldn't want that coming uh, onto my back. <laughs> Absolutely no way. But I suppose that is the point. You've got to prove that it's ready to be put into a suit. Yes, the, the test is very specifically set up so we know um, exactly how much force is being uh, um, subjected to the protector and then how much transmitted energy we get. Uh, and it's, it's designed to make sure that there is a benchmark that we can measure against so we know for sure that this is going to pass the CE certification and more importantly if a rider has a big high side or slides into a curb or something like that, that they're going to be safe. That is the number one priority and I just seen over your shoulder when when we just did that test a little green spike comes yes, up on the screen. it does indeed. Um, we have a spike for the uh, energy that was transmitted through the, uh, or the force that was transmitted through the back protector. In this case, just about five kilonewtons. Um, the maximum allowed is this red line up here, which is a 12. Um, and the average uh, of all of the impacts that we do um, really mustn't exceed the, uh, the blue line here. So, um, we're, so we're well looking good there. The, uh, we're well within the requirement there. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. So what makes the back protectors so strong? Well, if you'd like to come over and have a look, we've got one on the bench that we can, uh, we can show you. Perfect. Here it is. Okay, so here we are. So the protector has this hard outer shell, um, which is a polypropylene. Yeah, that's um, nice and hard. Yep. Yeah, um, obviously it's been opened up, so it's not quite as rigid as it would normally be, but you also see that it's designed to be flexible. Um, obviously on a bike, you know, races are moving around a lot so we have to make it flexible and uh, also make it breathable. Do they have uh, them made specially for each individual rider? Um, at uh, MotoGP level we uh, we make some changes to the fit. Um, the materials are exactly the same as we would use in production. Um, we take the technology from racing and use it for production um, but yes we make some uh, modifications so that it fits the suit perfectly and fits their back perfectly. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so for underneath the uh, un hard outer shell, we then have this uh, viscoelastic oh, that's, uh, that's gel. Hard as well. Yeah. Um, but you'll see it's actually like a, a memory foam. Um, I can compress it there, and then oh, it bounces back. back. Yeah. Um, it's also very flexible, but not in a in a particularly um, uh, structured way, it just uh, moves with you and then slowly it will find its way back to a neutral position. And these holes here are for ventilation or just...? Yeah, um, ventilation for sure. Um, we have to give the riders as much ventilation as we possibly can through all of the layers of protection and uh, apparel that they're using, but also for weight saving. Um, as with just about every form of motorsport, weight is a critical issue. So we thin out, um, cut out, whatever we can that's non-essential uh, to make sure that the weight is kept to a minimum. Obviously we have to achieve all the standards that we want to set, um, so there's no compromise on safety or performance, but we do 
um, make things as light as we possibly can. Well, it looks good, it's light, and it sounds pretty sturdy. I think I'd yes. give that a go if I was a MotoGP rider. Right, <laughs> what is next on the okay, list? Okay, I think next we'll look at leather abrasion testing. Perfect, let's head over here. Right, abrasion testing, this sounds painful, Jeremy. Yes. Well, it would be if, uh, if your hand was in there. But, and it's already um, going, so this can just be left running to test yes, things. Yes, I mean, this might be doing a 10,000 cycle test, um, you know, whatever it's set up for, particularly, uh, you know, the type of technology we're looking to, um, to evaluate. Um, but essentially, we go through an, a known number of cycles. Uh, using various different materials and uh, and this is leather. testing the leather. Yeah. Yes, th this will test leather. Um, usually, we use a, uh, a specific grit sandpaper um, over a given number of cycles, and then we can evaluate, you know, how much abrasion the the leather is able to withstand. So, what have we got in here at the moment? I can see pink pieces. Uh, Pinky you can brown. see yes, you can see uh, sandpaper in here. You can also see Velcro uh, testing. Um, pads in here as well. Right. Uh, so we do all sorts of material analysis in here. It's not just leather. Um, it's for textiles and the kinds of uh, materials that we use. But obviously for the purposes of motorcycle racing, leather is the critical uh, material. Absolutely. And so when, when it's finished its cycle, you get it out, you evaluate the leather to see which one's stronger, which one's perhaps not the one to use. Yes, um, a whole range of different uh, requirements, really. Um, I can show you in here um, some sample. Oh my goodness, uh, some of these looking like they might not have been chosen. Exactly. <laughs> um, so this is, this is a typical test, um, 800 cycles on different samples of leather, in this case a bovine leather, so cow leather. Um, different thicknesses, um, but as you'll see, the thickest one, 1.6 millimetres, was actually the worst result. That's so weird, because you'd expect it to be completely the other way around. Yes, the reason being that it's um, very bright colour, so the pigments, the, the dyes that have been used uh, for, the, um, uh, for the leather surface treatment have obviously been very aggressive, so it breaks down the material properties right. of the leather. Um, so, so if it had been we, left on its own, it probably would have been as strong, but it's just those colours that have weakened it. Um, it's the colours that have probably weakened the leather. Um, during the tanning process, we're very specific about exactly what uh, technology we want used and the processes that we want used so that we achieve the best possible result. Um, in, the, in the case of these bright greens, we still use them but we've found other ways to introduce the colour to the leather so that we achieve good results like the anthracite rather than a failure like this. Especially with all the brands out there wanting their different colours. I yes, suppose it's quite yeah, a, it's, well, it's very a difficult important. thing to get right. Yes, yeah. yeah Perfect. Absolutely. Well, they, we don't want to use those, but these look pretty good. And we can leave the machine running. And yes, we can leave the machine running. Head on to our next bit of testing. Absolutely. What's next up? Um, I think strength testing is next. Uh, we'll Sounds see good. Uh, how, uh, how resistant to some force the leather is. So the leather gets a serious workout. We've done the abrasion testing, and now this is strength testing. Yes. A tiny bit of leather in We've there. We've got a sample of leather in there. This is our traction machine. It's actually called a dynamometer. Um, and here in the jaws of the machine, this uh, sample of leather is now being pulled apart. Oh my gosh, I can see it going. <gasps> oh, very stretchy. Yeah. Ah. And finally it goes. Um, so that's uh, just a break of the fibres, it's yes. just too much. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's uh, natural fibre, um, obviously leather, cowhide. Um, so eventually, you know, it gives and um, the, the strands actually come apart. But um, as you'll see on the screen, the, uh, the actual output is pretty good. I mean, for the standard of, uh, of leather, that's, you know, that's a good... Tip top. Yeah. Okay, so now we've tested the leather, we've done abrasion, we've done strength, we've done hitting the back protector. Do we start making the suit? Yes, we'll go over to racing development and look at the build of a suit uh, and uh, show you how that goes from beginning to... Uh, to a final full MotoGP suit. Okay, so we're in Alpine Stars Racing Development Center um, in the I measurement room. I am on a bike. Room. I yes. am on a bike. Sitting on a bike. Well, we measure all of our riders in the riding position. Um, so this is the starting point, really. I mean, obviously the suits have to work for while they're on the bike. And um, we can refine the measurements once they're sitting on their actual race bike. But as a starting point, we use this motorcycle dummy to, uh, to get the suits fitting near correctly. So are the race suits made in the shape of being on the bike? Yes, yeah. We, we optimise the shaping of the suit so that when they're on the bike 
they're comfortable, the suits um, are in that position so there's no resistance. Um, you know, we, we don't need to introduce any additional effort to the rider having to put the suit in the right position so we, we actually build the suit in position and also they move around a lot on the motorcycle while they're riding. So it's critical that they fit well and that there's plenty of uh, um, flexibility in the suit. So once they've been measured, where do they go and what happens to the measurements? Well, if you jump off, we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll go through to the development room and uh, we'll show you uh, how the uh, process goes from here. Perfect. Let's go. So you take all the measurements and then I can see Mark Marquez is on here. Yes. Well, this is actually our graphic department. So uh, this is where we start the the visual process um, with a design for the suit um, so we can get uh, a logo layout and the base colour uh, pattern done. Um, and from this we will sign off all of the sponsor logos, positioning and the look of the suit. Uh, and then when we've actually created the suit, obviously this is what we're looking for as an outcome. So you're working very closely with the riders and the teams at this yes. point? Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And the teams obviously um, work with their sponsors to make sure that everything is in line with the agreements they have. Um, but yes, we work closely with them because it's an integral part of make the makeup of the suit. Absolutely. So when it's all on computer, you can tweak bits here and there and then I guess you've got to start putting a pattern together or am I thinking Absolutely, too yes. like sewing? Yes, it, and we'll, we'll go over here where the patterns are and the, uh, the, the measurement details that we take um, all get fed into uh, the, uh, the 2D um, pattern making um, which happens here. on here. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, and indeed if you look on screen here it gives you an idea of, uh, of what, um, what we have. So there's various parts of a suit uh, on screen here. Um, and they can be manipulated, they can be changed, but the key thing is making sure that everything comes together as a final package extremely accurately um, and that we take what's on screen into reality. And this is just like CAD, is it? Yes, this is a CAD system, um, so it will work out the solution for an entire suit, all the different parts. Um, once we're happy with the individual parts, we will do a print uh, on a plotter um, so we get a, a paper version, and from that we can then make the cutting guides. Um, so uh, then we go out into production. And still using all that research and development you did back at the other base. At yes. Other yeah. We um, the the feedback and the or the input we get from the laboratory um, defines the specification of the actual materials uh, and can give us some good data on performance and uh, things like. You know, in the case of fireproof suits, obviously the, the performance in the fire cabinet um, for leather racing suits, how strong the leather was. But also we look at breathability, um, how much we can absorb moisture out away from the skin. Um, uh, lots of performance aspects that go into you know, the, the, uh, the overall package. So that's all on the computer. Yes. It's then coming then over here. It comes over here. Um, there's a large plotter. Um, I've never seen such a big printer in my life. <laughs> yeah, well, we can do an entire pattern on here. Um, and, uh, and that will very accurately lay out all of the parts of the suit. Um, and then once we've got the pattern, we go over to the digitizer. Um, so we just make sure that all of the um, reference points of each part are uh, conforming to what we had in the CAD system uh, and, make, and that gives us the overall look and feel of how it comes together and then we go up to we go to layout here um, and in fact in this case we've got uh, part of Mark Marquez's suit. A little uh, bit a of what Mark Marquez will be wearing. Yes <laughs> yeah um, this is now um, graphics on a cardboard base um, these are the cutting guides uh, which we actually use to, um, to, to form the, uh, the leather panels. Um, but we've introduced the graphics onto the, uh, onto the outer surface so that we can see exactly how the fit works um, with all of the details in each panel. And so many pieces just to yes. make up one suit. Yes, I mean there's a, a lot of panels to each suit and then all the different individual layers and components as well. And when you talked about the aeration and the breathability, breathability yeah. you can already see, yes. look. Yeah. Yeah, we can do suits at different levels of uh, ventilation from 
almost no ventilation for wet and cold conditions through to you know, 75, 80% ventilation for the hot races. And we're about to go to the Malaysian Grand Prix where obviously, you know, conditions are usually very hot and humid. So we'll do um, very ventilated suits for that. And that's all feedback from the driver <coughs> again, saying what they prefer. Yes, we, we work with them closely because they'll all have individual preferences on those performance factors. Um, we base all that we do for our customers ultimately on what we learn out of racing but um, on an individual basis you know Mark might want a slightly different ventilation level to, to Danny or Jorge or um, so yeah we, we will work with them particularly to find out what they each individually want. Now I'm guessing this becomes leather. That will so become leather we yes we head from uh, from here out into the build area. Okay um, right. And that's through this door Next here. Next step. Wow, look in here. So where do we head to in here? Lots okay, of we're going to head down to uh, leather cutting. Uh, and we have to the right here all of the component makeup for the suits. And then down the left hand side, the actual production line uh, where we build the suits. Um, but the process for the physical material starts here. Wow, um, look at that bit of leather. So in fact, they're working on a suit here. Um, and. Uh, the cutting, which is a, actually a very skilled job, knowing how to use a leather hide. Um, we still do it by hand for, uh, for racing because this is the most accurate way to do it. Um, so the, the cutting patterns that you saw being created in there are actually being used here to, uh, to create the guides Look for what we're going to cut. So it's important to make those little marks, I guess, for attaching to other pieces, isn't it? Yeah, those are the reference marks so that we get everything absolutely in the right position. As I said earlier, the tolerances that we work to are very, very fine. Um, every suit should come out exactly the same until we make a conscious effort to make an update or a modification. That is unbelievable. Wow, every single detail. That is one piece of a race suit. Yep. Grazie. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Okay. okay, so that's the pieces of leather. Yeah, and once we have all Sewing the parts, together. <coughs> yeah, we, uh, we start the work of sewing them together and that's uh, taking place over here. There's a suit um, in progress here. And then also we have a, one of uh, Mark's suits, Mark Marquez's suits, that's ready for the final parts of the process. Um, actually, the attachments of the, uh, the shoulder protector. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. hard. So that's going to be inserted uh, onto the shoulder section um, and we can watch that being done. So that's sticky. I can't believe that this is going to be inside Mark Marquez's race suit when we see him racing next. This is amazing. Going through the rubber, through the uh, polyurethane. Yeah, that is one strong needle. This is fascinating. In the average race suit, we're using over a mile of thread. A mile of thread. Oh yeah. my goodness. Wow, that'll be racing around a track somewhere soon. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing us that. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we'll get the other one put on and then we can do some of the final fitting over in the, uh, the finishing section. Brilliant. Okay, so we're now in the final stages of the suit build. Um, and in fact, the airbag system is being inserted. Um, we're starting with the uh, sensor wires that are distributed around the suit. Um, they are put in first. Um, now one of the airbags uh, in the left shoulder is just being inserted as well. We are going to have an exclusive behind the scenes video about airbag technology coming soon on the channel, so keep an eye out for that. Now that it's all installed, they, we then put the inner liner in, um, the comfort liner. Uh, that will be installed and then we put the final external um, sliders on, uh, the knee sliders and then 
the, uh, the elbow sliders. Thank you very much. Racing red for Marquez. <laughs> And this is purely a comfort thing? Yes, this is the inner comfort liner. It has um, some soft uh, padding through it. Um, it also means that th this can be uh, removed after each session and dried out or washed. Or, um... Very important. <laughs> He's all zipped up. Okay, so. Now Mark's become pretty well known for his Yes, this is, uh, the elbow sliders have become a little bit of a signature, really. He's, he's actually not the only rider that we have who uses them, but um, uh, he has become renowned for, for dragging his elbows. Um, and like all of the rest of uh, the riders, obviously, uh, knees as well. Yes. Look at those. Let's check that's all good. Yeah. That is one finished race suit. And what's now left to do? Now, normally we would re-measure the suit uh, just to ensure that all the measurements that came out of the computer are actually what exist here. Look how and dirty he is. we put it up on the, uh, the weighing scale. Uh, and then once we've recorded that, then uh, we put the uh, protective cover on it and uh, it's ready to go to Mark. Let's go racing. And that is how you build a MotoGP suit. Six of us.